The Arctic represents the final frontier of conventional hydrocarbon development. My name is Zachary Skoko, and today I will be discussing the role of mechanical engineering in the development of offshore drilling in the Arctic, the opportunities offshore drilling can bring in the future, along with the challenges it faces in its development today. The opening quote was taken from a paper published by the Wilson Group in Washington, D.C., titled Opportunities and Challenges for Arctic Oil and Gas Development. The U.S. Geological Survey estimates the Arctic could contain 1,670 trillion cubic feet of natural gas and 90 billion barrels of oil. In other words, 30% of the world's gas and 13% of its oil lays undiscovered. This large amount of oil is becoming more and more accessible due to climate change, and energy companies are starting to look towards the Arctic as the more conventional sources of oil begin to decline. Albeit the extremely large presence of oil and natural gas in the Arctic, there are many challenges that offshore drilling faces, ranging from economic, political, and engineering factors before offshore drilling in the Arctic becomes a viable option. Firstly, drilling in the Arctic is currently only economical when the price of oil is high, making it difficult for companies to invest in this technology with the economy in its current state. Furthermore, these oil rigs produce a large amount of pollutants. The current air permits released by the Environmental Protection Agency had allowed previous oil rigs, for example the Shell Rig Discoverer, to generate over a single drilling season a greenhouse gas equivalent of 300,000 cars operating over a full year. Furthermore, there is a great deal of engineering challenges that offshore drilling faces. Some of these challenges are the possibility of an oil spill, the effects of the noise pollution on the marine life, transporting the oil itself from the well back to land in a safe manner, and the matter itself of drilling in these extreme conditions safely are all problems that engineers have to address. The first component in the diagram is called the derrick which is a top drive mortar capable of generating 25,000 foot-pounds of torque and which can also drill through up to 20,000 feet of rock. Number two is the hull geometry. The Kulik is 24-sided and flares out below the waterline. This shape helps it shed ice but also makes it hard to tow. Number three is the spread anchors. The Kulik is anchored above the well by a dozen three and a half inch thick lines. In an emergency, these can be released with an acoustic signal. Number four is the mud line cellar. Vital well components are positioned in a 40 foot deep, 20 foot wide cavity to protect them in case a huge iceberg passes over the site. Finally, number six is the blowout preventer. A failed blowout preventer was a big factor in BP's Gulf of Mexico spill. The Coolix blowout preventer has three mechanisms pipe rams, blind shear rams, and annular valves to shut off the well. One of the major challenges the offshore drilling rigs face is avoiding a blowout. The first level of defense in preventing a blowout is having sufficient weight of drilling fluid, also called mud, to create a larger pressure than the pressure coming from the underground well. Furthermore, engineers have developed blowout preventers. A blowout preventer is a big set of valves that can be activated in the event the mud fails to prevent the oil from leaking. Another big concern is the effect the noise pollution generated by the oil well will have on the surrounding marine life. Engineers have been working on a bubble shield that is intended to reduce the sound waves that will be sent throughout the water, which would help reduce the rig's impact on its surrounding environment. Overall, the Arctic is abundant in oil and gas, but it is very hard to access. Mechanical engineers continue to work hard to address the multiple challenges offshore drilling brings us and have started to develop technologies to facilitate this process so that one day, drilling in the Arctic becomes an economically viable option.